Hi. Um, so I was actually here uh, sitting on your side uh, of the uh, of the floor uh, four years ago uh, as a ESCP student. Um, so the bad news is uh, I don't have a great uh, long career to look back onto and to give you that one piece of uh, life-changing advice uh, that uh, that is going to make you happy. Um, but what I can try to do is take you through some of the experience. Um, uh, that we have with Share the Meal of trying to really use the digital uh, world to try to tackle one industry, in this case, uh, the fundraising uh, industry, um, to try to end global hunger. Um, I, on the way here, I was thinking about a great anecdote that I could tell you guys. I didn't come up with one, so I'm going to change the game um, and ask you, what do you think? What can you buy for 50 cents? Any ideas? Just shoot them out. Here, fruits, one fruit, yeah, yeah, okay. So you see there are some things, but it's really, if you think about it, not a whole lot, right? Um, so I think even more surprising if I tell you that for 50 cents, you can feed one child for one full day. That's all it takes. Um, when I joined Share the Meal, one of the most surprising facts uh, that I wasn't aware of is that today one in nine people is still suffering from hunger. And hunger kills more people than malaria, HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis combined. I will be very honest with you, I was not aware of that. Of course, we see people of starving kids on, on TV, but the gravity of this problem was very new to me. Um, the good news is that on a global scale, we are on the right track to solving that problem. Every year, the percentage of hungry people uh, goes down. Um, so we're on the right trajectory. And the great thing is that um, it's something, it's a problem uh, that we can even solve today. Because I just told you that it's surprisingly cheap uh, to feed a child. Um, and now if you look at this graph, there's actually 20 times as many smartphone users as hungry kids in the world. So imagine the impact that we could have if we just pulled together. 50 cents for an individual, I would assume, at least in our, in our world, is not a whole lot. If I tell you, okay, there's a kid that would starve, would you give me 50 cents to feed that kid? You would do it. If I ask you, okay, I want you to cover the whole burden, you probably wouldn't. But together, it's a humongous potential uh, that's out there um, to really solve that problem. And why is this relevant here? Because for the topic digitalization, I think we are really the first generation with the tools to actually solve that. And this is really how the idea of Share the Meal was born. Um, the idea is that we've created a tool that allows you, with simply a tap on the smartphone, to donate 50 cents to the World Food Program of the United Nations. They take those 50 cents and they have all the operations in place to actually take that money and feed that, uh, feed that, uh, that child. And then the app shows you exactly where that money is going, what the progress is uh, that we're making. Uh, so it's very tangible for you to see the impact uh, of the app. Um, the idea um, is over a year old. Um, it was Sebastian Stricker. He's used to work uh, for the World Food Program um, all across Africa. And then one day he sat down and he said, OK, look, it's really, how is this? Uh, that it's so cheap, yet we're not doing anything really uh, to accelerate the process. Um, so he thought he had the idea of developing that app that makes it really simple for the user uh, to actually give that money. Um, and uh, I want to take you a little bit through the process uh, of how it started from the idea uh, onto where we stand today, uh, because I think it's, it's really great for you guys to know 
that yes, we heard that of course for some projects uh, you need a lot of money uh, and you need a lot of time. But actually I think the whole digital world uh, also allows you to create something big with very little resources. Um, and I think that's the, that's the beauty of it. Um, so from the idea, when he was working at the World Food Forum, he actually um, said, okay, I have the idea, let me step out. And he took one year of sabbatical uh, to really develop the idea, develop the business case, um, found a friend who had some programmers uh, available and they programmed a prototype. So it was really very, very low effort, uh, right? And then with that prototype, he went back to the UN and said, look, um, here's the concept, I would love to try it out. And that's exactly what we did. So uh, earlier this summer, uh, we took a basic version of the app um, and we launched it in a test market. The test market was Germany. Um, and what we did is we pretty much just put the app out there into the app stores uh, and send it to a couple of friends, family, just to, just to ask them to play around with it, to see if it works, to see what they think of the idea, to make sure that it's safe so that the money actually gets uh, to where it's supposed to go. Um, and uh, it worked. Um, and then we said, okay, now let's try to spread the word. Um, and there again, we didn't have any marketing budget, so zero euro. Um, and uh, we just went out and we tried to get the PR machinery going, right? So we called newspapers and it was really, it was literally a couple of people sitting in a small room calling every journalist, pitching the idea, asking them to, to help spread the word. Um, and it worked. Um, and uh, it's really, you could see in the numbers, uh, there was one uh, RTL interview, whoo, you had a spike, and then somebody else picked it up, Spiegel article, whoo, sees a spike, and then it started picking up. Um, and, uh, and users really loved it. Uh, so the app worked, um, and we got great feedback. Uh, so we went back to the, uh, to the World Food Program, talked to them and said, okay, I think it makes sense uh, to launch this uh, globally. So we took, uh, pretty much after the, after the German launch, um, we sat down um, and we really tried to plan uh, to take this app globally. And just to give you an idea, because I think this is where the, where the value, the insight for you guys is. This look, I mean, you, you were saying, okay, it's the United Nations, it sounds like a huge organization. We are 15 people sitting in one small room. Um, it's not very beautiful, uh, not the ideal working environment. Um, I would say almost half the team is unpaid. Um, uh, it's really people who believe in the cause um, com coming together um, and just scrambling, right? Um, and from the experience, I think it's for many startups, actually it's the same way, but I think also, also for this one, the experience to go through is really like this. So one day you get a call uh, from the Huffington Post saying, okay, we're going to do an article and you're here. And then the next day your developers talk to you, yeah, but this, we never talked about this. It's not going to work. So you're like, oh, can we even launch? So it's completely, and I mean, I don't think I'm, I'm, I can even put it in words, uh, but to go from, wow, this could be huge to, oh my God, we're never going to launch this. Um, is, uh, is quite intense. Uh, but it's also a very, very rewarding experience uh, if, you, if you pull it out. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea of what happened. So we prepared this. We just launched uh, this, this app t uh, globally two weeks ago. Um, and again, we were sitting there with 15 people, uh, 10 marketing people. Um, and uh, we tried to identify really the focus countries. We had a volunteer covering France because it was, uh, you know, resource-wise, um, talking through the French press agency, etc. cetera. Um, and, uh, but we were, um, we were really lucky. Uh, we got some, some great press. Um, so pretty much all the top tier media outlets uh, covered us. We should still be, if you check your app store, uh, <laughs> on the top spot uh, for, for best apps, um, also globally. And uh, we received some great support really from companies, from other organizations to really help us push, uh, push this app out there. Um, 
And if you see that number, that was before global launch, so now I think we had uh, almost 2.8 uh, million meals shared. So that's 2.8 million kids who otherwise wouldn't have anything to eat for that day. Um, and, uh, and that's where we stand. And uh, I think my message, really, again, I was mentioning that it's not going to be that, uh, that life-changing piece of advice. Um, but I think if I put myself back in the, into the student perspective, sitting there, I think, I mean, you have a lot of options uh, of what to do after the studies. And a lot of the options are, are really great. Um, and I think digitalization is really one tool that is really special to our generation uh, because it hasn't been easier to have a humongous reach. So all you need to have is, is that idea and then you can really do great things with, little t with a small team, with little resources. You don't need you know, that big overhead, that huge, uh, huge funding. Um, you can really do a lot. Uh, with very small, small resources. And uh, take it home, think about it, uh, but I think at least consider it as an option uh, for you guys. Um, because I think if you have that idea, um, it, it can really be, and I also went into consulting after university, so I'm not the, uh, the, the founder guy right out of university. Um, but in all fairness, I think this has been the most rewarding experience uh, in my life. And I told you about the, the ups and downs. But if it comes to it, um, I haven't done anything more fun, more rewarding, uh, and more meaningful. And this is a point, if you're not there yet, uh, it will come. Uh, so take it home, think about it, and uh, let me know.